You know what? Leave it up to Nickelodeon to actually make me miss the days when Drake Bell was Timmy Turner. Seriously, what is this abomination? No, but seriously, this crap made me appreciate Grow Up Timmy Turner way more than I ever would without it. Surprisingly, I didn't even see this when it first came out. In fact, I didn't even know this thing existed till like 2016, 2017, when I was an edgy 13 year old boy. Back when I only had three things on my mind, cartoons, Marvel movies, and boobies. A simpler time. But nah, when I saw this movie, I thought it was trash. I was just straight up confused, actually. The movie revolves around Timmy Turner, now 23 years old, 13 years after the events of the original series. Now, this 20-something seems to still live with his parents, which I guess was supposed to be funny back in the 2000s, but see it as how the economy is now, that's kind of just the norm for most 20-somethings. What isn't normal for most 20-somethings is still attending the 5th grade. Yes, this Timmy Turner at 23 still attends the 5th grade. Creepy implications aside, this just seems like a baffling creative decision that I still don't understand. Especially when all the creepiness of this could have just been remedied by making him a 17 slash 18 year old high school senior. But within the movie itself, this is just such a weird idea as I said, like, the fact that this 23 year old man is in the 5th grade and he never really gets made fun of it either, it's just weird. In fact, Chester and AJ are kind of jealous, which is just kind of strange. I guess the whole idea is that everybody wants to be a kid forever, and Timmy is a kid forever, but even that doesn't make any sense since he's only pretending to be a kid. And god is it unsettling. It's just weird and kinda sad. I mean, get this boy a tutor, like what? Now, this movie all over the internet is listed as a romantic comedy or a rom-com, and you might be wondering why the hell is a fairly odd parents movie listed as a rom-com? The entire movie is set into motion because Jordan von Sprangle kinda just wants Timmy to fuck off, I guess? Which does seem like something that Jorgen would do. I mean, it's pretty in character for him. Which makes his turn at the end like the twist of the century. You'll see what I'm talking about when we get to the end of this movie, because this turn just came out of nowhere. Now, for anybody who watched the original series, you probably thought that growing up and losing your fairies meant that you grew up and lost your fairies. I guess that you have to fall in love to grow up, which means all asexual people are just children, I guess? I mean, hey, I guess they can keep their fairies forever. So yeah, Timmy Turner, this 23-year-old man, has never fallen in love, except for the fact that he's fallen in love multiple times at 10 years old, so... Yeah. Including with grown women, as a child. And what constitutes love in this movie is just very strange, as his love meter, I guess, just starts to go up and he almost loses his fairies just by seeing and hugging Tootie. Which I guess implies that Timmy Turner has to be a virgin, or if he isn't, he must have been celibate at least for the last... I don't know, 10 years? I guess by choice, but like, even then, he didn't exactly have a choice when it came to Tootie. He literally had to avoid her, or he would lose his fairies. <laughs> this movie pretty much took one of our childhood favorites and turned him into a Discord mod incel. Also, if this 23-year-old man jacks off, does he just lose his fairies? So, it's at this point in the movie where Jorgen pretty much just gets fed up with Timmy Turner's celibacy and decides that this man getting laid is his number one prerogative. So, he tracks Timmy Turner down at the local grade school, where of course Timmy Turner is attending the fifth grade. And here's where it gets weird Jorgen's plan to make Timmy Turner fall in love is shooting him with a love arrow, which is strange because there's already a character whose whole deal is that that exists within the Fairly Odd Parents universe, Cupid. I guess they just gave Jorgen Cupid's duty. But here's the other problem. In probably the bigger one. Now, it's explained later in the movie that anybody who shot with a love arrow falls in love with the first person they see. And the problem with this is that Timmy Turner is a 23-year-old man in the fifth grade. And in the scene where Jorgen fails in shooting the arrow, he's surrounded by a bunch of children with no adults in sight, including teachers. So I guess that anything that happened afterwards would have been on Jorgen's hands. Speaking of this whole fifth grade thing, I thought the fact that Timmy Turner was a 23 year old man in the 5th grade was going to make him automatically undesirable to women, but that's not really the case, see as Tootie never actually finds out about this. Oh yeah, speaking of Tootie, her character glow up doesn't really make sense to me. Tootie only ever had two character traits in the original series, her obsession for Timmy and her being annoying. Her obsession with Timmy and her being annoying never really needed to be explained due to the fact that she was canonically a 9 year old girl in the original series, also never really had that many appearances 
appearances. I know that she's made her mark on fans, but I think she was only a major part in like five or six episodes. And most of those episodes, she was just an obstacle for Timmy to overcome. In this movie, her elevator pitch is pretty much that she's just end game for Timmy for whatever reason. And yeah, she's obviously hot, but like even visually, although I'm definitely not complaining, um, these two don't look like the same character like at all i am definitely not complaining about the casting but uh there's nothing that screams tootie about this character even chester and aj who have significantly less screen time manage to at least embody their characters which i understand they couldn't really do that for tootie because well she doesn't have a character outside of being annoying and having an obsession for timmy turner which of course the whole obsession thing wouldn't really work here due to the fact that timmy is in love with her this time around and the fact that she's not really portrayed to be annoying one of the only other things that was ever notable about tootie in the original series is her big sister vicky is timmy's babysitter and also pretty much one of the villains in the original series for what it's worth but in this movie it's acknowledged that tootie's family moved away a long time ago i guess they must have just left vicky here because she seems to have been working here for a while but they never acknowledge that these two are related in this specific movie which is just weird in my opinion i mean yeah the movie's only like 50 something minutes but like y you think you could like throw in a nod or something after you pretty much understand that this movie's whole point is to just get timmy and tootie to kiss or something it's at that point where you realize most of the plot is actually just throwaway where you realize that this movie tries to pitch a whole idea that Crocker is teaming up with this random businessman who I don't even remember his name actually now that I think about it so that this random businessman can harness the powers of Timmy's fairies or something it sounds like I don't know what the hell I'm talking about and that's because I don't think the story or even the script writers knew what the hell they were trying to make when they wrote this plot. Again, this movie feels so disjointed because it's literally not even an hour long. And yet there are so many cliches that are just thrown in, like Crocker getting betrayed by the random businessman we don't give a damn about. Movie having one of the most cliche conclusions that kind of goes against the entire message this movie was trying to tell the entire time. Where the whole point was that Timmy was going to have to grow up and give up his fairies, but in the end, he never has to do that. Okay, spoiler alert. Which I mean, I've already spoiled the entire movie, but who cares? Um, Jorgen von Strangle, for whatever reason, decides to grant Timmy Turner the ability to keep his fairies forever, I guess. Or, I guess, as long as Timmy does good? Which goes against what I thought they were trying to do with Jorgen in this movie, which was make him a necessary evil. And then they went and made two other sequels for this movie. Upon rewatch, this movie wasn't as bad as I remember, but it's certainly not peak cinema, although it's certainly miles ahead of whatever the head Fairly Otter was trying to do. This movie's entire story and messaging was just confused to say the least, and just peculiar. I'm not saying I could write anything better. I, I could definitely write anything better. I'm convinced that most people could write a better plot. Also, the CG is not that good to look at, and Poof is the most unnecessary character in this entire movie, which is why he did not need to be brought up at all till now. Seriously, this kid does absolutely nothing throughout the entire movie. He has no nothing to do in the entire plot. Like, he's just there. The nigga chin! Shut your ass up! You don't even belong here. Shut your-